last night, man. It got going early for LSU as the Tigers were uh, they were awakened early. And look, Florida got going, and it looked like it was going to be a, a back and forth game. Uh, and then um, LSU really was the storyline offensively for the tournament was runners left on the base path, right? Runners in scoring position and LSU's inability to hit. Well, last night they, uh, they flushed the demons as the Tigers scored 18 runs. Thatcher Hurd got his second win of the College World Series. He threw six innings. He allowed two runs, two hits, uh, and that happened to the first two batters that he faced. He struck out seven. Um, man, I, I really, I don't know where you would start with this, this championship run. Uh, really, it has been, for, for, for my money, and I remember saying this, and I was thinking about this last night when we were watching the game, I, I was so speculative of everybody hyping this team up, right? I, I remember Mikey Matuk and Jared Mitchell, who got incredible run during this champion. I mean, like, their names got brought up in the, the post-game press conference. Below show. Every single Ooh, night. Man, man. Well, Every all these night. guys are that age. I know. It was were, incredible it's to like see Christmas the impact, for them. You know, like, that, that team made on this group. But Try going to Omaha without him. I bet. I, I, so, I remember Matuk, and it might have it might have been Renato was here one day. And it was, I mean, it, it was a who's who of the 09 team, right? I mean, it was like Matuk, Ochinko, Jared Mitchell, and it might have been Renato was in here as well. And they were talking about this team as if they were the best of all time. And this was, this was in January. You know, you were like, well, this is LSU baseball, fellas. I mean, like, not that I have to tell you guys, but I mean, like, right? I mean, the fraternity is, is, is sacred. And for, for you to crown a team in January, I just thought, man, this is, probably putting the cart before the horse a little bit within the program. And then now having the full season to look back on and react to, man, it, it may go down as the best championship team of all time in the program because of that, in my opinion. Baseball is such a difficult game, right? I mean, just look at the last 48 hours for LSU baseball to be a great example of how crazy baseball can be, right? From 24 to 3 to 18 to 4, and LSU gets the 24 hits, which is just, I mean, like, it's, it's, it's so poetry. perfect. It's unbelievable. But to, to be able to navigate from, from the off season, from the fall, into the season, into postseason, into the College World Series and close it out. Eight weeks is number one. Expectation to be a championship team from day one and then go through adversity like every baseball team is going to have to do. I mean, even the 27 Yankees went through adversity. I mean, like, I mean, it doesn't matter how good you are. At some point, the roller coaster is going to dip down a little bit. And it did. And, and for them to be able to pick it back up and, and go through the season – the postseason and Omaha, the the way that they did to win the trophy, I think that the the further we get away from this team, the more we look back on this team, it, it'll almost feel like a 2019 football type. Well, you saw squad the way that they celebrated. It felt yeah. very symbiotic. Like the the symbolism was there. Everything, but from Dylan Cruz doing the ring me to smoking the cigar, like 2019 set the president kind of. And then you see the women's basketball team do the same celebration. That set the standard for what LSU was supposed to be. And for LSU baseball to follow it up with the national championship. And you're right. For them to get almost a blessing from the 2009 team. Or, yeah, the 2009 team to be like, this is the next one up. Like, they don't do that lightly. They're not trying well, to that crowd. That was the part that they, freaked me out. Yeah, they don't want they – don't, it's not like, like they don't want another team to I win mean, it. But they want it to be a team like that to win it. Where they're, that's a brotherhood. Like, when you, when you see the 2009 team, they're all still together. They all still text each other. Like, Mikey had 350 texts last night during the live stream, and it's all from teammates. Sure. Jared had the same thing. And you can see that almost in this right. 2023 team where you don't – that's what it takes almost, and that's why they're so beloved, it feels like, this year, where everybody was bought in 
from the fans to the coaches to the players where they all love each other and for them to all come together with the transfer portal being in play to you have a guy like Malazzo from Zachary to Paul Skeens carrying him to the dog pile. Like, they, those two people shouldn't know each other. He was in the Air Force Academy, and he's in Zachary, Louisiana, to now they're piggybacking each other to a dog pile. That shows the coaching and just how much a baseball team can come together in a short period of time. It, it was a great job, I think, and will be underestimated and may maybe not talked about as much because of the performance on the field, but the, the coaching staff, and, and look, last night, I, I think we talked about this earlier this week or late last week. I have not covered anyone specifically and look I'm not on the day-to-day beat of the LSU baseball grind I just you know following the program and getting to see the way that Jay Johnson runs it and and you know being able to have a, a front row seat of LSU sports and seeing all these coaches that have come through here and people that have been obsessive about their program I mean we talked about this I believe here recently coaches by nature are psychotic right I mean like they they are the most insecure overbearing people in the world, right? I mean, like everybody from Kim Mulkey to, you know, John Brady. I mean, everybody in between. I mean, it, you know, seeing them up close, you get to see these personalities and you're like, wow, these people are nuts, man. I mean, like just how much they obsess over the the game, the team, the program, right? The outcome. I have never seen anybody so well connected and in tune with his team like Jay Johnson is. And look, last night, Cade Beloso bumping up to number one in the lineup, I think is a great example of that. Who expected to see that when the lineup card came out? And then he makes the move, and Beloso gets on base four times last night. He puts Dylan Cruz in the second spot. Cruz has his best game of the postseason. You know, I mean, look, that that may, like, hindsight 2020 where you're like well yeah i mean like that was he you think that's easy on championship monday to make that move as the coach i mean we've been doing this all season long like this and now we're in the final game of the year going for a championship let me do this let me move these let me let me move these these chess pieces around and, and make these moves and as he makes those moves i mean just boom magic right i mean it just in line, in tune, in contact, being in touch with his team, I think is, is so important to think about when we, when, we, when we describe this 2023 National Championship squad. It's almost the perfect mix of guys that have been in the program that are veterans. Gavin Dugas, Kay Beloso, Jordan Thompson, Dylan Cruz, Guys that have been here for a selected amount of time and has seen LSU, Trey Morgan, come through times where, look, LSU baseball was wondering, like, hey, it, 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 where's the lore? Where, where is, where's the feeling of the magic of, of the program? And then infusing guys like Paul Skeen, Stature Heard, Tommy White in, into a locker room that's also has a high-end recruiting class, right? You know, a a, a top-flight recruiting class coming out of high school with, you know, arms with guys like Chase Shores, who we saw early in the season. And putting them on the field, developing them, and holding them accountable every single day to be a championship-level program. I mean, the things that Scott Woodward has done in a short time of making moves at the head coaching spot in pretty much all of the headline sports has turned in to a Powerball ticket. I mean, like, for Jay Johnson and Kim Mulkey to be hoisting trophies inside of their programs within two years, you think Brian Kelly woke up a little earlier for work today? You think Matt McMahon's feeling a little pressure to perform? I mean, what, what's, what's the competition level like in that athletic administration building? It's incredible to say out loud what LSU is doing athletically right now. I get why the nation hates LSU. I'd hate the hell out of LSU if I wasn't from Baton Rouge and grew up loving purple and gold. I, 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 really. I mean, you got to look down at LSU and be like, shit. 
they ain't going away. This is this this train is not stop. I mean, Jay Johnson. I'd imagine he was probably doing some Saban stuff last night on the flight, like texting players, texting. <laughs> He's been getting recruits during, during I mean, in right. Omaha. Chase Burns, I saw, went into the portal. This Maryland. I mean, it, it It just, man, I mean, th- that team, those moments, that championship run, to do it from pole to pole, to, to do it from start to finish, to start the year number one in the country and to finish number one in the country and only spend seven weeks – of a 52-game regular season schedule out of the number one spot and then take that number one team that was ranked during that seven weeks and beat them in a three-game series? I mean, think about what LSU did last week. They beat Wake Forest in a three-game series, and oh, by the way, they bounced Tennessee in the middle of it. (laughs) I mean, this is the greatest tournament championship run Again, like I say this all the time, you speak in hyperbole in this business, you'll get burned this afternoon, right? But, I mean, give me a better run than what LSU did to get here. I mean, I'll take you back to the regional. I mean, beating Oregon State the way they did, the way they beat Kentucky in the Super Regional, showing up to Omaha, performing in that first game against Tennessee, losing that bang-bang game against Wake Forest. I mean, that was a game that goes either way. Trey Morgan's out by an inch, half inch. Trey Morgan makes the play the next day by an inch. And then they get into a three-game series against Florida and beats the hell out of them for the title. I mean, to win that game last night in the fashion that they did, it's the sweetest championship run I can think of, man. I, I, I can't think. It feels 2019 LSU football. It was almost harder, right? Like, 2019 felt, obviously, you have to beat Alabama in the fashion that they did in the slugfest. They did, but you always felt comfortable in what 2019 LSU football was. You knew that they every time they lined it up, they were the better team. You could say that about LSU baseball. But I think it goes to show how hard it is to win a baseball national championship, especially coming, like you were talking about, going through the loser's bracket, where they had to go and what was the biggest question about LSU baseball this entire year? Pitching. Pitching. What showed up the most until the final game where you were waiting for the LSU offense to explode? Jay Johnson is an offensive guy, and for it to finally show up when it mattered the most was the the culmination of a year's-long work almost. What a recruiting pitch. Jay Johnson has. If you're the best pitcher in the portal, is it Air Force's pitcher? There's another one, yeah. Isn't there another Air mm-hmm. Force pitcher that's a dog? Right? I would like imagine he knows I mean, Paul Schemes. He, he's not Schemes, right? But I mean, like, oh, he could be. He's, he's same a, thing. He's, he's 93, 95 killer, at Air Force, right? He's mm-hmm. he's going to the portal. <laughs> so if you're the best <laughs> pitcher in the portal, which Paul Schemes and Thatcher Hurd arguably were last year, Schemes was. Thatcher Hurd was a top. Three? Oh, top he was five. He's the number one pitcher out of California in high school. Okay, right. And he went to UCLA. So, what do you think the conversations with Thatcher Heard last summer were with Jay Johnson? I'm going to give you the ball in some big games, son. On TV, you come to LSU, you are going to pitch in humongous games. Thatcher Heard started the national championship last night and had the game of his life. I mean, the conversation that Jay Johnson is has is having with either the kid from Air Force. Chase Burns, whoever it is. I mean, Jay Johnson is great at what he does, and he has you know built this thing and turned it around in a short time. But those conversations are pretty easy now. You know, like, oh, he, what's it going to be, son? Do you want to come play for a national championship and or not? And now you don't have to promise the fact that you're going to win one. It's like, I've already shown you we can do it like this. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that, I know. So that's what I'm saying. saying. But so it's, it's before he won it, he was saying, hey, come here, right? you'll win a national championship. I mean, did I was you see saying, him telling the story about Skeens last night? Well, he was telling about recruiting all these guys. And I believe, I think it was Jacques that asked a question. Because he, he looked and he said when he was recruiting these guys, he, he, he gave his travel schedule. He said last year he came to Omaha, and from there he flew to L.A. and met with Hurd. Then he flew to Missouri and met with Christian Little. Or, or from there, he met with, flew to Colorado and met with Skeens, L.A. to meet with Hurd, 
Christian Little, Tennessee. then went to Tennessee, then went to Florida and met with Tommy White and said, um, then the next weekend he got all of them on campus for an official visit except Skeens because Skeens was playing for Team USA. And as he's telling the story, he drops in, I call Paul every day. <laughs> and everybody's like, and like uh, people like uh, smirked, you know, like kind of laughed. And like, he like looked up at him and was like, no, I called him every single day of the summer. You know what I mean? It's like, that's the thing about Johnson. It's like, you almost want to like, kind of like, don't believe him. Like, kind of like, <laughs> and he's like, <laughs> you like stare. Like somebody asked him a question. I think it was Cobble asked him a question two nights ago. And, and he was like, what was the discussion like in turning around, um, might have been turning around schemes in, 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 on the four-day road, on the, on the four rest? And, and his, his answer was right up coaching. And then he kind of went into it. And Cobble was like, ha! when he said coaching, he kind of thought he was joking. Kind of right. like he was like, he kind of like was thinking like he's taking credit for something that schemes. And then he was like. No, it's coaching. We had discussions on how we and like he like lays out like this this like we meet with the staff, what the you medical go team, through to yeah. make this decision. To I mean, it's it's him last night in the post game. He was walking on clouds. I don't even think it hit him. Like I don't think there was like a moment. I know he he doesn't have kids, right? But there was a moment when like it looked like a gate of kids was opened up and came and ran to him. I don't know if it was he's nieces, got a, he's got a extended and family, yes, or something. But they came and like. Like crashed him, you know yeah, what I mean? Like it. they crashed. I mean, like, and he's like, he's still like, and like smiling for the picture. He's still very much kind of. He's kind of like looking around. Yeah, I mean, he's still just kind of like taking it as he's walking around. You know, he's kind of like got his hat. You know, he's just kind of. I mean, he's just. You can see that this is just. It's a release. It, it's it, it, it's They're, the it's the dude's life. Like when 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 you hear this is my life, you know, you're like, all right. He's one of the first ones I've ever believed. I believed Burrow when he's like Burrow's like, you know, Joe Brady and Joe Burrow that that year in 19 you're like, man, these guys they do nothing outside of football. Like they think about football 24 hours a day. Jay Johnson, Will Wade, you know, I mean like Will Wade cut like, from I mean, a different cloth. He watched yeah. his he watched his baby be born on FaceTime. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> he was in Nas he was recruiting. living room <laughs> watching his daughter. I'm not kidding. I know you know, I like, didn't. I mean, Nas, I mean, like, him, they have a picture of him and Nas, like, looking at the camera. You know, like, Jay Johnson, he doesn't have kids. Like, he doesn't. Yeah, all he does. He, it's the LSU baseball team. All yeah. he thinks about. You know who's this kid? Jordan Thompson. Mm. That, that moment, Jordan that Thompson. moment that he and Jordan Thompson shared last. I mean, he choked up. He, cri- he put his head down. I am a crier. I know what crying looks like. I mean, I have hidden crying on this show before where I've gone back and watched it and been like, I'm, I mean, I'm choking if up. you're watching it, you know I'm crying. <laughs> Somebody bail me out. Jay Johnson was crying last night. When oh, he was Jordan asked. Thompson I mean, was he, crying. He put his hat down and he looked down and when he, he looks back up, you can see his eyes are like gleaming off the light because, I mean, he wants to like break down and ball for a minute because of what Jordan Thompson – like he was going back to at bats describing Jordan Thompson last year. He was like, "Look, Jordan Thompson had a bad defensive year." He said, "But nobody will remember has the, the big hits that he got last year." And gave a couple of examples, and then said, "The first day that they were allowed to get into defensive, you know, uh, practice, I mean, he was talking about the regimen that that Thompson went through, and then he talked about the decision of." If he was going to pull him for the championship game, I can't believe he, someone asked. He like him. looked at the people. He was like, "You don't get it. Like this guy. There's only two people that have started every game since Jay Johnson has been the head coach at LSU. You know who they are? Jordan Thompson's one of them, and, and Dylan Cruz, Dylan, and Dylan Cruz. Yeah. <laughs> so why would you not? Start right, like him? The, the, well, that, there's there's no way he was. No, right? no, that's just and a lot he of was telling yeah. that story. Right? I mean, he was giving it to a lot of people. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, you could tell. I mean, I, I think he actually says in the, in the quote, he says, it pisses me off. And he said it twice. He said, it pisses me off. It pissed me off the way that Jordan Thompson was being criticized. And I mean, like, if you're Thompson, I mean, like, you got to be looking at him saying, Coach, tell me where you want me, when you want me, and I'll run through any brick wall you got in yeah. front of me. Like, I will crush anything you ask me to do. And for him to perform the way he did yesterday 
was so sweet. Such a sweet redemption. I mean, me and little Jay were standing up in the living room on his first at bat. Like, Everybody was clapping right. at the screen. I mean, like, come on, JT. Come on, JT. Everyone was. It was amazing. I mean, and when that crowd started chanting his name, man. Yeah. I mean, that was a. That was emotional. That was a beautiful moment for him. I mean, that was before a last beautiful, night. Beautiful, beautiful moment for his him. His only hit was that one RBI with Tennessee, right? It was in the one for 30. Yeah. yeah. And then he. Had the first, drove home the first run last night. I mean, that was so awesome. sweet. The, the, the defensive plays he made? Right. I mean, I well, thought he was going to make all three outs of the night. I did too. <laughs> that was <laughs> crazy. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I was like, this is this is incredible. I mean, the night this kid's having is unbelievable. Hit him a line drive so he can keep the ball. I want him to get the third out so he didn't have to throw yeah. it. So he can put it in his back pocket. Who was it? I think it was Eddie Furness. Caught it and put it in his back, back pocket. pocket. That's the move. That is the move. <laughs> that what is must move. that have felt like for him after oh, all about, those weeks I mean, of listening to the BS? Ain't nothing but a right. peanut. I mean, I mean, that must have felt amazing when everybody was on their feet for him. I no, mean, just, I, don't, I, I can't even imagine. I would imagine he didn't hear any of that because of what he went through before. And we were saying this last night. Whenever you played the way he did in the game before, whenever you hit rock bottom – which is essentially what he did. You can't play worse than that. You have to kind of, whether it be a Jay Johnson or somebody or even yourself, look at me like, what am I worried about? If I just did that, right. I can't play worse. Mm-hmm. So essentially, fuck it. Like, yeah, let's right. go and well, play I mean, ball. Johnson told the story. He brought I'm going to start. He brought him into his hotel room yesterday at 1030. And he was like, brother. Bro. <laughs> I mean, like, <laughs> you're playing tonight. That's, yeah, that ain't you. Right? But he said to him, he said, but then I told him, is there anything that I can do for you to get you, like, maximum? Like, can I maximize your potential in any way tonight? Can I do anything for you? And he just said, he looked me right in the eye, and he said, I got you. I'm Good. ready. And I, he's like, I never thought, I never said, <laughs> I never thought about it again. I mean, you know, it's just, baseball's an evil game, man. I mean, baseball is an evil, evil, evil game. It will game. find you when you're at I mean, your lowest. The ball, the way the ball finds you when you don't want it, the way that you're up to bat in key moments and you're in the slump. I mean, it, it, was, it was hovering and smothering Jordan Thompson during this tournament. So for him to have that moment last night, man, I, I think is, it's a great lesson. Like I, I, was, like I told, I was telling little Jay last night, Remember, always remember, man, fan, they're not cheering. They're not cheering you and they're not booing you. They're cheering and booing moments. Mm-hmm. So when you got good moments, they're going to cheer you. When you have bad moments, they're going to boo you. So they're not really a fan of you. It's not you. It, it's not, they don't know Jordan Thompson. They don't know the work that kid's been in, what he did last summer. I mean, I know for a fact that Ryan Terrio would go meet Jordan Thompson for hours upon days, every like nearly like consecutive days on months stretches of just either watching video, fielding with him, cons- just talking with him, just just working, <laughs> like like get me out of this funk, man. Get make me a make me a a, a defensive shortstop and. Before those two errors he made on, on Sunday. Clean sheet. Yeah, I'm trying, trying to well. remember a, a ball he booted all season long. And for people that think he wasn't good last year defensively, he played last year with the, a knee injury and he didn't tell anybody. That's right. Played the entire year, didn't say a word. So if you want to question his character or question his loyalty to LSU or question his ability to play baseball, think about the guy that could have easily – come out the game or said something, whatever, everybody was ragging on him, and he didn't, he kept his mouth, he, I'm good, all good, we're all good. Like, it takes somebody with a especially high character to not blame an injury whenever you're definitely hurt. And for him to be able to move through that, move through what happened in game two of the College World Series, and then show up like he did, it's not a shock to me, because that's the kind of person he is. Like, you keep your head down, keep working, don't say a word. And that's what you have in the LSU shortstop, who's... Who'd you, who'd you mention him with? Terrio. Dylan Cruz. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, you don't think Jay Johnson's going to put him back out there? <laughs> I mean, like, that's, like, it was, like never, it was, never, so debate, the, it was yeah, never debated. No, but <laughs> I mean, yeah. all the LSU people that are going to Twitter, like, you've watched three games this year. Congratulations. <laughs> Bag on them all you want. You haven't watched baseball yet. So, we don't care what you think. Uh, and the performance that Cruz had last night. I mean, <laughs> four for like, six? Four Pretty for good? Six. Not only that, it, it seemed like, the Every ball right. for about a three-inning period 
was going right. And not only that, like he was showing off everything, his speed, the ability to track it, that ball, that he, that catch, that, that, catch he, that was Jamar Chase. Yeah. That yeah. was crazy to watch <laughs> like, him like look at the wall how, spot and then turn around and run and get back right, right there. I mean, like, what is that? Do That's you, a like, safety. You know how hard looking, that is. Like, to, yeah. You know how hard it is to take your eye off of a sunlit baseball, running full speed. Look at a wall that I may <laughs> run into at full speed, and then turn back around. And catch that ball that's coming in at me at 100 miles an hour? That was weird. I mean, like, how good of a DB would he be? <laughs> right. Like, how good of a DB would he be? I mean, seriously. I mean, like, he was probably so good at baseball that they were like, you're never touching any other sport. But, like, I wish he would have had the LeBron, like, sophomore, junior year of football film. Right. So you could be like, <laughs> just in case you were wondering. <laughs> I mean, like, this cat could track down – a five-star wide receiver, six feet two or three, running like a deer. I mean, that is that Craig so Stelts. Weird. You don't weird. think? Yeah, you don't I mean, think he's got like, a little mean streak to him? I mean, like, <laughs> let him catch you coming across the middle, running full speed one time. Have y'all seen the shirt Nyla Threads put out? And the shadow of it on the uh, wall is a goat, goat. shadow. Yeah. It is oh, it's the coolest shirt. Did you see his wang? <laughs> did you see the goat shadow? Look at it. I it's didn't unbelievable. That. It's unbelievable. I'll have to go back and check. I mean, he's got a burrow brain. <laughs> Uh, Anotherthreads.com. Uh, Go to my story. It is on there if you want to follow the link. Uh, I, I sent you that picture. Yeah. <laughs> right. Print the t-shirts. Bro. 